Now we are going to be looking at the macroeconomic performance. So we are just building from the first lecture really that we had. So in this second lecture, what is happening is that we will look at the macroeconomic performance in this sense. We are going to look as to how do we calculate the economic growth. Because you, you, you see, that's the first one. The first one we're going to be looking at economic growth. So the question is how do we calculate that? So therefore, we are just saying um, economic growth is equal to what? GDP now, which means this year, minus GDP times T minus 1, that means last year, divided by GDP times T times T minus 1. And then, if you multiply this by 100, it must give you the economic growth. And now what I want people to understand is that if your answer here is equals to zero, it tells you that the economy is not growing. The economy is not growing and the economy is not declining. So we talk about, we are saying the economy is stagnant. But if your answer is positive something, then that will be the economic growth. Economy is the economy is growing. So that these are these are these are these are these are the good news, the economic growth. But now the economy is growing and it means employment is also going up, and that is fine. But if your answer is negative, now it means that. We are sitting with some problems. The economy is actually declining. And in this case, we are more likely to see unemployment going up and more other problems. But then now we also see the problems of deflation when the prices are actually going down in the economy, which is very bad for the producers. So that's the first objective. This is how we calculate the first one, which is economic growth. And you will see that what we will do in this case, we will give you the data and they say calculate economic growth for 1990. So what you do is you say GDP 1990 minus GDP 1989 divided by GDP 1989 and then everything you multiply by 100. That will give you the economic growth. So now that tells you that economy growth can either be zero negative or positive so but good news will be when it's positive because we always we always want to produce more than we did the previous year so take note of this formula and practice it more often right and then number two is that of price stability so with the price stability price stability all i'm saying is that now we want to know the inflation what is the inflation in the, in, the, in the economy, in the country? We know that the country's uh, monetary policy committee is saying that for as long as inflation rate is between 3% and 6% in South Africa, there is no problem. The economy, uh, the prices are stable. So we want the price to be here. So therefore it means what? Anything below 3% means bad. Anything above 6% means bad. Because you know that if inflation is going very, very high, it becomes hyperinflation and that is not desirable. If the inflation goes very, very, very low, it becomes deflation. And again, that is not uh, desirable. So, and for instance, I can just say hyperinflation is bad for producers because now producers now cannot be able to... Sorry, hyperinflation is bad for consumers because now consumers are not be, uh, will not be able to to uh, afford what they want to buy but now deflation is bad for producers because now producers now remember they bought their stock when the prices were high but now when they are selling the stock 
now the prices are lower, so they will make loss as well. Right. But now the question is now, what we use to calculate this? We use consumer price index. So, therefore, it means what? Inflation rate is equal to CPI, which is consumer price index. Now, at time T, minus CPI at time T minus 1, divided by CPI at time T minus 1. So, and then you take everything, you times it by 100, and then it will give you the inflation rate. So, what is happening now is that now again, guys, if your answer is zero, it means there is no inflation, neither inflation nor deflation. But if your answer is positive, now it tells you that now there is inflation. But if your answer is negative, that will be deflation. So now this means what? Inflation, which means the prices are increasing in the economy. And then negative means deflation, which is actually deflation is the opposite of inflation. And then now coming to uh, uh, number three, which is what? Which is, uh, I'm just going to give you um, a, 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 a what? Uh, unemployment. Now, number three here, I'm just going to say unemployment. Unemployment. But now, remember, unemployment now, we must calculate unemployment rate. So therefore, we will just say this is the total number of people who are unemployed divided by the total number of what? Labor force. Now, labor force now is what? Is everyone who is looking for work job and willing to work. Obviously, some will be working, some will not be working. Those who are still looking. So therefore, it means what? If you times this by 100, it's going to give you the the unemployment rate. And you will see that, obviously, in many books, when you see the term labor force, they will call it economically active population. This is the one the same thing. So what is happening here is what? Labor force is actually total number employed plus total number unemployed. So what does this mean? This means that if your unemployment rate is equal to 20%, it automatically tells you that your employment rate is equal to 80%. And if your unemployment rate is 80%, it already tells you that the other one, obviously. Because the sum of unemployment rate and employment rate in the same economy must add up to 100. Right. Now, that is um, the unemployment story. Now, coming to inflation, uh, what do you call it? Um, the, third, the fourth one now is the, the issue of balance of payment stability. Now, we said you look at the exchange rate with regard to your balance of payment stability. We said we have to look at the, 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 the exchange rate. Now, remember, if the rent is becoming weak, weaker rent means what? Means depreciation of the rent. Now, it means with the same amount of money, now you will buy less goods when you go uh, abroad. Now, <laughs> stronger rent Is equals to appreciation of the rent. Now, what does this mean now? This means that weaker rent is good for exporters, people who are selling exports, but stronger rent is good for <laughs> importers. Which makes it difficult, obviously, for government now to be able to please everyone. Because if you make the rent to, to be weak, the exporters will be happy because they will make more profit. 
if you make terrain to be stronger, the importers will be heavy because now they will be able to buy a lot from overseas. So therefore now it means so there's no way you can please everyone. You must just try to sort of balance so that you don't make someone very, very happy and then make the other one not happy at all. And then coming to the last one, I believe, which is um, equitable distribution of income. And I just call it equity here. We're saying here, we make use of Gini coefficient. And you will see that when you read this, that it actually, the measurement goes from 0 to 1. So if Gini coefficient is 0, it means that income is equally distributed. Everyone is getting the same amount in the economy. But if a Gini coefficient is equal to 1, it means that now the income of the whole economy goes to only to one person. And therefore, these are the two extremes. So therefore, it means what? It means if the country has got the value of Gini coefficient very close to 1, it means that there is no equal distribution of income. But if it's close to 0, there is more equal distribution of income. But this one you can read on your own. It's not a problem. The, I wanted to add the sixth uh, 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 objective, which is actually the developmental... developmental objective because you see what happens is most macroeconomic textbooks do not have developmental objective because most macroeconomic textbooks are written based on European and American countries and their development is not really the, problem, the major problem to them but to us African countries we need to add this and the question is now how do we measure this development or developmental objective we make use of Human Development Index. That is what we are using to measure this uh, 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 development. Obviously, if the Human Development Index is higher, it means that now this development, if it's lower, it means the development is actually not there. So, I would like to thank you very much for here. And then I am asking you to go and revise this work. Revise, revise, revise and revise so that you are able to understand what, what I was speaking about. And then in the next lecture, I am going to be talking about Keynesian model. I will start to introduce Keynesian model and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then we will move forward. Thank you very much.